Laudetur Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ. And welcome to this live broadcast of the celebration of the Passion of the Lord, which will be presided over by Pope Francis here in St. Peter's Basilica. Today's liturgy is part of the Easter or Paschal Triduum. The Triduum begins with the celebration of the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday and concludes with evening prayer on Easter Sunday. On behalf of Vatican Media, I would like to welcome all of you to this broadcast, especially to all of you joining us through the various Vatican News channels, through the Vatican News or Vatican Radio app, the Vatican News English web portal, Facebook Live, or YouTube accounts. We also welcome all of you who are joining us through our partner broadcast stations, EWTN-TV, Catholic Faith Network in America, Salt and Light TV, Shalom World TV, Atmadarshan TV, Shalom TV India and Sunday Shalom, Catholic TV, Luminous Radio in India, and UCTV Uganda Catholic Television. And a very warm welcome to all of you joining us through various local or diocesan radio stations. We also welcome all of you who are joining us through television stations picking up this worldwide telecast. My name is Devin Watkins and I will be providing the English language commentary and translations for this papal liturgy. As we begin this liturgy, uh, I would like to note that we are at the heart of the Easter Triduum, and as such it is filled with silence, and so it offers us a chance to ask God for forgiveness for our own sins. However, on a technical note, since many of our listeners are joining us through radio and cannot see the images that others can see on the screen, we must continue to offer commentary even in moments of silence. So for those of you following on TV or another visual medium, you are welcome to lower the volume in order to reflect in silence during those moments. I apologize to everyone in advance. As you can see, Pope Francis makes his way and processes into the basilica. In his wheelchair, he is pauses in prayer in front of the altar, in front of the crypt for the tomb at the tomb of St. Peter. As you know, this liturgy is not a mass. It is a continuation of the liturgy that began yesterday evening at the Easter Triduum with the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Pope Francis presided at that Mass yesterday, uh, at the beginning of this long liturgy yesterday at Rome's Rebibia Women's Prison. And so this liturgy continues on all the way through Good Friday and as you will note, does not begin with the sign of the cross, and nor will there be the customary penitential rite or the liturgy of the Eucharist. This liturgy will consist in the liturgy of the Word, the lengthy solemn intercessions, the adoration of the cross, and Holy Communion. At times this liturgy is also referred to as the Mass of the Pre-Sanctified, because the faithful will receive hosts that were consecrated during the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday. And according to a very ancient tradition, the Church does not celebrate the sacraments at all today. The only exceptions are the Sacrament of Penance and the Anointing of the Sick. And Pope Francis begins with the opening prayer. Reminisce la miserazione un tuo un domine, e famo los tuos eterna protezione santifica, per cuius Christus, 
Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As the congregation here in St. Peter's Basilica as takes a seat, we await the beginning of the first reading, which is from the letter, the book of the prophet Isaiah. Dal libro del profeta Isaia. Ecco, il mio servo avrà successo. Sarà un A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant will prosper. He shall be lifted up, exalted, rise to great heights. As the crowds were appalled on seeing him, so disfigured did he look that he seemed no longer human. So will the crowds be astonished at him, and kings stand speechless before him. For they shall see something never told, and witness something never heard before. Who could believe what we have heard? And to whom has the power of the Lord been revealed? Like a sapling he grew up in front of us, like a root in arid ground. Without beauty, without majesty we saw him, no looks to attract our eyes a thing despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, a man to make people screen their faces. He was despised and we took no account of him. And yet ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the sorrows he carried. But we, we thought of him as someone punished, struck by God, and brought low. Yet he was pierced through for our faults, crushed for our sins. On him lies a punishment that brings us peace, and through his wounds we are healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and the Lord burdened him with the sins of all of us. Harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly. He never opened his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law he was taken, would anyone plead his cause? Yes, he was torn away from the land of the living, for our faults struck down in death. They gave him a grave with the wicked, a tomb with the rich, though he had done no wrong, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. The Lord has been pleased to crush him with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs. He shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. Hence, I will grant whole hordes for his tribute. He shall divide the spoil with the mighty for surrendering himself to death and letting himself be taken for a sinner while he was bearing the faults of many and praying all the time for sinners. And now the cantor makes his way to the ambo for the responsorial psalm from Psalm 31. Padre, nelle tue mani consegno il mio spirito. 
Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Signore, mi sono rifugiato, mai sarò deluso. Difendimi per you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, set me free. Into your hands I commend my spirit. It is you who will redeem me, Lord. Rifiuto dei miei nemici e persino dei miei vicini, il terrore dei miei conoscenti. Chi In the face of all my foes, I am a reproach, an object of scorn to my neighbors and of fear to my friends. Those who see me in the street run far away from me. I am like a dead man, forgotten in men's hearts, like a thing thrown away. Confido in te, Signore, dico tu sei il mio Dio, i miei giorni sono. But as for me, I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. My life is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of those who hate me. Ed ai miei persecutori. Tuo servo fa splendere il tuo volto. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your love. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. All who hope in the Lord. Voi tutti che sperate nel Signore. And now we will hear the second reading. Lectura de la carta a los hebreos. Hermanos, ya que tenemos un sumo sacerdote grande que ha atravesado el cielo, from the Jesús, reading, hijo de Dios, reading from the book of the Hebrews. La confesión Brothers and sisters, no since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace, and to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. And 
now we hear the gradual. was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Christi secundum Johannem. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Egresus est Jesus cum discipuli suis trans torrentem tetron. Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kedron Valley. There was a garden there and he went into it with his disciples. Judas the traitor knew the place well, since Jesus had often met his disciples there, and he brought the cohort to this place together with a detachment of guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees, all with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus omnia Que ventura erant super eiu, procesit et dicit eis. Quem queritis, responderunt ei. everything that was going to happen to him, Jesus then came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus the Nazarene. He said, I am he. Now Judas the traitor was standing among them. When Jesus said, I am he, they moved back and fell to the ground. He asked them a second time, 
Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. I have told you that I am he, replied Jesus. If I am the one you are looking for, let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken. Not one of those you gave me have I lost. Simon ergo Petrus, habens gladium eduxit eum, et percusit pontifici servum, et absidit eius auriculam dextram. Erat autem nomen servo malcus. Simon Peter, who carried a sword, drew it and wounded the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its scabbard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Cohos ergo et tribunus et ministri iudeorum, comprehend derunt Iesum et liga verunt eiu, et adux serunt ad anam primum, erat enim socer caife, qui erat pontifex anihilius. The cohort and its captain and the Jewish guards seized Jesus and bound him. They took him first to Annas, because Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had suggested to the Jews, it is better for one man to die for the people. Discipulus autem ille erat notus pontifici, et introivit cum Iesu in atrium pontificis. Petrus autem stabat ad ostium foris. Exivit ergo discipulus alius, Qui erat notus pontifici, et dixit ostiarie, et introduxit Petru. Dicit ergo Petro ancilla ostiaria. Nom quid et tu, ex discipulis, Es hominis istius. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's palace. But Peter stayed outside the door. So the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, went out spoke to the woman who was keeping the door, and brought Peter in. The maid on duty at the door said to Peter, Aren't you another of that man's disciples? He answered, I am not. Now it was cold, and the servants and guards had lit a charcoal fire and were standing there warming themselves. 
So Peter stood there too, warming himself with the others. Respondite Jesus, ego palam locutus sum mundo, ego semper doquin synagoga et in templo, quom nes iudei conveniunt, et in oculto locutus sum nil. Quid me interrogas, interroga eos, qui audierun quid locutus sum ipsis, ece isciunt quod The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews meet together. I have said nothing in secret, but why ask me? Ask my hearers what I taught. They know what I said. At these words, one of the guards standing by gave Jesus a slap in the face, saying, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If there is something wrong in what I have said, point it out. But if there is no offense in it, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. Erat autem Simon Petrus, stans et cale faciense, dixerunt ergo hei. As Simon Peter stood there warming himself, someone said to him, Aren't you another of his disciples? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at once a cock crew. Aducunt ergo Jesum a caifa in praetorium. Erat autem mane, et ipsi non introierunt in praetorium, ut non contaminarentur, sed manducarent pasca. Exivit ergo Pilatus ad eios foras, et dicit, Quam accusat sionem afertis, adversus hominem hunc. Responderunt et dixerunt ei. They then led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was now morning. They did not go into the Praetorium themselves, or they would be defiled and unable to eat the Passover. 
Pilate. So Pilate came outside to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, If he were not a criminal, we should not be handing him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and try him by your own law. The Jews answered, We are not allowed to put a man to death. This was to fulfill the words Jesus had spoken indicating the way he was going to die. Intro ivi tergo iterum in praetorium Pilatus, et vocavit Iesum et dixit ei. Tu es rex iudeorum, respondit Iesus. Atem et ipso tuoc dicis, Annaliti bidix rund deme. Respondit Pilatus, Num quid ego iudeusum, Gens tua et pontifices, Tradiderunt te mici, Quid fecisti? Respondit Iesus. Regnum meum non est de mundo hoc, Si ex hoc mundo est regnum meum, Ministri mei de certarent, ut non tradere iudeis. Nun cautem meum regnum non estinc. Dixit itaque ei Pilatus, Ergo rex es tu, respondi. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and called Jesus to him. Are you the king of the Jews? he asked. Jesus replied, Do you ask this of your own accord, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? It is your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent my being surrendered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. So, you are a king then? asked Pilate. It is you who say it, answered Jesus. Yes, I am a king. I was born for this. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth. And all who are on the side of truth listen to my voice. Truth? said Pilate. What is that? And with that he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no case against him. But according to cu a custom of yours, I should release one prisoner at the Passover. Would you like me then to release the king of the Jews? At this they shouted, Not this man, they said, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a brigand. Lama verunt ergo rursum dicentes. Non un censor, barum, barum, barum. Erat autem Barabbas latro.
Tunc ergo apprehendit Pilatus Iesum, et flagellavit. Et milites plectentes coronam de spinis, imposuerunt capiti eius. Et veste purpurea circum de derunt eium. Et venie pantad eium, et dicebant. Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged. And after this, the soldiers twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Ut coniuscatis quia in eo in venio causam nullam. Exit ergo Jesus foras, portant spineam coronam, et purpureum vestimentum, et dicit eis. Ece homo, cum ergo vidisent eum pontifices et ministri, clama verunt dicentes. Pilate came outside again and said to them, Look, I am going to bring him out to let you see that I find no case. Jesus then came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, Here is the man. When they saw him, the chief priests and the guards shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. We have a law, the Jews replied, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Set Pilatus hunc sermonem magis timuit. Et ingressus est praetorium iterum, et dicit ad Iesum. Unde est tu? Iesus autem responsum non dedit ei. Dicit ergo ei Pilatus. When Pilate heard them saying this, his fears increased. Re-entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know that I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you. You would have no power over me, replied Jesus, if it had not been given you from above. That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater guilt. Pilate 
Proptere aqui tradidit me tibi, maius peccatum abet. Ex indequere bat Pilatus, dimitere eum. Iudei autem clamabant dicentes. Tus ergo cum audicet hos sermones, aduxit foras Iesu, et sedit pro tribunali, in locum quidicitul litos trotos hebraice autem gabata. Erat autem parasheve pasche, Ora erat quasi sexta, et dicit iudeis, ecer ex vester, lama verunt ergo hiri. Tolle, 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 From that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free. But the Jews shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who makes himself king is defying Caesar. Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself on the chair of judgment at a place called the pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was Passover preparation day, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, said Pilate to the Jews. Take him away, take him away, they said. Crucify him. Do you want me to crucify your king, said Pilate? The chief priests answered, We have no king except Caesar. So in the end, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Et paiulan sibi crucem, ex civit in eum quidicitur calvarie locum, quod hebraice dicitur Gogota, ubi eum crucifixerunt, et cum eo alios duos hinc et hinc medium autem Iesum. Scripsit autem et titulum Pilatus, et posuit super crucem. Erat autem scriptum, Iesus Nazarenus, Rex Judeorum. They then took charge of Jesus, and carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to the place of the skull, or as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him with two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the Jewish chief priests said to Pilate, 
you should not write King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Respondit Pilatus, Quod scripsi, scripsi, Milites ergo cum crucifixe sent Jesu, Acceperunt vestimenta heius, Et fecerunt quatuor partes, Unicuique militi partem, et tunicam. Erat autem tunica in consulitis, de super contexta per totum. Dixerunt ergo ad in vicem. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, instead of tearing it, let's throw dice to decide who is to have it. In this way, the words of Scripture were fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my clothes. This is exactly what the soldiers did. Maria Cleope et Maria Magdalene, cum vidis et ergo Jesus matrem, et discipulum stantem quem dirigebat, dicit matri. Mulier, et ce filius tuus, de inde dicit discipulo, et ce mater tua. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and, mother of, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment the disciple made a place for her in his home. Vas positum erat aceto plenum. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed, and to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in the vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, it is accomplished. And bowing he said, he gave up his spirit. Et inclinato capite, tradidit spiritu. And now we pause, kneeling, to reflect on the death of our Lord.
kneeling, we reflect on the death of our Lord in silence. We continue reflecting on our Lord's death. along with everyone in St. Peter's, we reflect. Iudei ergo quoniam parasheve erat, Ut non remanerent in cruce corpora sabato, erat enim manius dies ivius sabati, rogaverunt pilatu, ut frangerentur eorum crura et tolerentur. Venerunt ergo milites, et primi quidem fregerunt crura, et alterius cri crucifixus est cum eo. Ad Iesum autem cum venisent, ut viderunt eium iam mortum, non fregerunt eius crura, it was preparation day, and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since the Sabbath was the day of special solemnity, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him, and then of the other. When they came to Jesus, they found he was already dead. And so, instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. This is the evidence of one who saw it, trustworthy evidence, and he knows he speaks the truth, and he gives it so that you may believe as well. Because all this happened to fulfill the words of Scripture, not one bone of his will be broken. And again, in another place, Scripture says, they will look upon the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because he was afraid of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission, so they came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus at night time, and he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices in linen cloths, following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified there was a garden, and in this garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. Since it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there.
And now, Cardinal Raniero Cantalamesa, the preacher of the papal household, will, according to custom, deliver the sermon, the homily, for this liturgy of the Passion of the Lord. Quando avrete innalzato il figlio dell'uomo, allora saprete che io sono. E la parola che Gesù pronunciò al termine di una When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am. This is the word that Jesus pronounced at the end of a heated dispute with his opponents. There is a crescendo compared to the previous I am pronouncement by Jesus in the Gospel of John. He no longer says, I am this or that, the bread of life, the light of the world, the resurrection and the life, and so on. He simply says, I am, without further specification. This gives his declaration an absolute, metaphysical dimension. It intentionally recalls the word of Exodus 3.14 and Isaiah 43.10-12, in which God proclaims himself, proclaims his divine I am. The shocking novelty of this affirmation on the mouth of Christ is discovered only if we pay attention to what precedes Christ's self-affirmation. When you lift up the Son of Man, it is then that you will know that I am. As if to say, what I am, and therefore what God is, will only be manifested on the cross. As we know in the Gospel of John, the expression to be lifted up refers to the event of the cross. We are faced with a total reversal of the human idea of God, and in part also of that of the Old Testament. Jesus did not come to improve and perfect the idea that people have of God, but in a certain sense to overturn it and reveal the true face of God. This is what St. Paul was the first to understand. He wrote, for since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not come to know God through wisdom, it was the will of God, through the foolishness of the proclamation, to save those who have faith. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Understood in this light, the word of Christ takes on a universal significance that challenges those who read it in every era and situation, including our own. That reversal of the idea of God, in fact, always needs to be renewed. Unfortunately, in our conscious mind, we continue to carry on the very idea of God that Jesus came to change. We can speak of a God who is pure spirit, su supreme being, and so on. But how can we see him in the annihilation of his death on the cross? God is all-powerful, no doubt, but what kind of power is it? Faced with human creatures, God finds himself devoid of any capacity, not only coercive, but also defensive. He cannot intervene with authority to impose himself on them. He cannot but respect 
to an infinite degree the free choice of human beings. Ed ecco allora che il Padre rivela il vero volto della sua onnipotenza nel suo figlio che si mette in ginocchio. And so the Father reveals the true face of his omnipotence in his son who kneels before the disciples to wash their feet, in him who is reduced to the most radical powerlessness on the cross and continues to love and forgive without condemning anyone. The omnipotence of God is the omnipotence of defenseless love. It takes little power to show off. It takes a lot of power to put one aside and to conceal oneself. God is this unlimited power of self-concealment. He emptied himself. To our will to power, God has opposed his voluntary powerlessness. What a lesson for us who more or less consciously always want to show off. What a lesson for the powerful of the earth. Or at least for those among them who do not even remotely think of serving, but only of power for power's sake. Those as Jesus says in the Gospel, who oppress the people and, in addition, call themselves benefactors. But doesn't the triumph of Christ in his resurrection overturn this vision, restoring the invincible omnipotence of God? Yes, but in a very different sense than what we usually think. Very different from the triumphs that were celebrated upon the emperor's return from victorious campaigns along a street that is still called Via Triumphale in Rome today. There was certainly a triumph in the case of Christ and a triumph both definitive and irreversible for that matter. But how does this triumph manifest itself? The resurrection occurs in mystery, without witnesses. His death, we heard in the story of the Passion, had been seen by a large crowd and had involved the highest religious and political authority. Once resurrected, Jesus appears only to his a few disciples out of the spotlight. In this way, he wanted to tell us that after having suffered, we should not expect an external, visible triumph such as earthly glory. The triumph is given in the invisible and is of an infinitely superior order because it is eternal. The martyrs of yesterday and today are examples of it. The risen one manifests himself through his apparitions, which suffice to provide for a very solid foundation for faith for those who do not, from the start, refuse to believe. But it is not an act of revenge to humiliate his opponents. He does not appear in their midst to prove them wrong or to mock their, imp Im their impotent anger. Any such revenge would be incompatible with the love that Christ wanted to bear witness to in his passion. As in his annihilation on Calvary. He behaves humbly in the glory of the resurrection. The concern of the risen Jesus is not to confuse his enemies, but to go and reassure his dismayed disciples and before them the women who had never stopped believing in him. <coughs> 
In the past, we willingly spoke of the triumph of the Holy Church. People prayed for it, and the historical achievements and reasons were willingly remembered. But what kind of triumph did we have in mind? Today we realize how different that type of triumph was from that of Jesus. But let us not judge the past. There is always the risk of being unfair when we judge the past from the perspective of the present. Rather, let us accept the invitation that Jesus addresses to the world from his cross. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. It would almost be thought of as an irony and a mockery. One who himself does not have a stone on which to lay his head. One who has been rejected by his people, condemned to death. One before whom one covers one's face so as not to see. He dares to address all humanity of all places and all times and say, Come to me all of you, and I will give you rest. Come to me, you who are old, sick, and alone, you whom the world lets die in poverty, hunger, or while under bombardment, you who languish in prison cells because of your faith in me, or your battle for freedom. Come to me, you woman victim of violence. In short, everyone, excluding no one. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Didn't I promise you, when I am lifted up from this earth, I will draw everyone to myself? But what rest can you give us, O man of the cross, more derelict and tired than those you want to console? Yes, come to me, for I am, I am God. I have renounced your idea of omnipotence, but I have kept my omnipotence, which is the omnipotence of love. It is written, that the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. I can console and give you rest even without taking away the fatigue and tiredness in this world. Ask those who have experienced it. Yes, O crucified Lord, with our hearts full of gratitude on the day in which we commemorate your passion, death, we proclaim aloud with your Apostle Paul. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No. In all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we have just heard the homily delivered by Cardinal Raniero Cantalamesa, the preacher of the papal household. He recalled the words that Jesus spoke to indicate his death 
and his the mystery that would be revealed therein when you lift up the son of man then you will realize that I am Cardinal Cantalamesa spoke about the novelty of this affirmation from the mouth of Christ. He said it is only discovered when we pay attention to the first part of Christ's self-affirmation, when you lift up the Son of Man, it is then that you will know that I am. Cardinal Cantalamesa spoke about the complete reversal of the human idea of God and God's omnipotence understood in our own human way. He said instead that God, that Jesus overturns that vision of God as omnipotent and made it, turned it into omnipotence in love. And now we begin with the solemn intercessions. The deacon will read, sing the first. Oremus dilectissimi nobis, pro ecclesia sancta dei, for Holy Church, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pre pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Deacon and ourselves pause. Omnipotence eterna Deus, Gloriam tuam omnibus in Christo, gentium. Almighty and ever living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church, spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Set pro beatissimo Papa nostro Francisco. For the Pope. Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your unending kindness protect me, your unworthy servant, that the Christian people entrusted to my pastoral care may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the Church, and for the whole of the people of God. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, Hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully, through Christ our Lord. Let us also pray 
for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Accepta remissione omnium peccatorum, et ipsi inveniantur, in Christo Jesu Domino nostro. Omnipotens et eterne Deus, qui ecclesia in tua nova semper prole fecundas. Almighty ever-living God, who make your church ever faithful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Et pro universis fratribus in Christum credentibus. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Omnipotens et eterne Deus, Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us also pray for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Omnipotens et Deus, Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Let us also pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Omnipotens et eterne Deus, Almighty ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God Himself. Omnipotens et eterne Deus, Almighty ever living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to His will, 
for the true peace and freedom of all. Ad veram omnium pacem et libertatem. Omnipotens et eterna Deus, in cuius manus sunt omnes. Almighty ever living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace and freedom of religion, may through your gift be made secure, through Christ our Lord. Oremus pro populis bellorum ad procitatibus vexatis. Let us pray for peoples devastated by the atrocities of war. May their tears and the blood of the fallen not be shed in vain, but hasten the dawn of an age of peace born of the glorious wounds of Christ Jesus. Deus misericordia et fortis. O God, merciful and strong, who crush wars and cast down the proud, swiftly banish violence from the human race and wipe away all tears, so that we may all deserve truly to be called your children, through Christ our Lord. Oremus dilectissimi nobis, Deum Patrem Omnipotentem, ut cunctis mundum purge terroribus, morbos auferat. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Atque morientibus salutem indulgeat. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And that concludes the solemn intercessions. And we move to the second part of this liturgy of the Passion of the Lord, the Adoration of the Holy Cross. <laughs> Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Let us kneel. Let us stand. The 
cross is brought in procession to the second spot. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Let us kneel as the cross is lifted high. Let us stand. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Let us kneel. Let us stand. And the cross is brought to the Holy Father. So that he may adore the Holy Cross kissing the image of Jesus.
as the cardinals adore and venerate the Holy Cross. The choir sings the antiphon. We adore your cross, O Lord. We praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For behold, because of the wood of a tree, joy has come to the whole world. May God have mercy on us and bless us. May he let his sh face shed its light upon us and have mercy on us. several more Vatican officials and authorities come to venerate the Holy Cross. As the veneration of the cross continues. We recall that the altar remains bare during this liturgy. It was stripped during yesterday's Mass of the Lord's Supper. There will be no candles or cross on the altar. Later, during the liturgy when we receive we enter the rite when Holy Communion is received. At that point the altar will be prepared with candles since our Lord will be present in that moment in the Blessed Sacrament. We see on, on the screen the images that 
the veneration of the Holy Cross has concluded. The cross is brought once again to Pope Francis. takes a hold of it as everyone kneels and he offers us the benediction with the Holy Cross. We pause to reflect with the Holy Father. on our Lord's saving passion and death on this Good Friday at the heart of the Easter Triduum. the altar with a simple cloth and the pre-consecrated hosts the body of Christ is brought to the altar by the deacon the deacon is making his way in procession from the tabernacle where the body of Christ was reposed yesterday at the end of the Mass of the Lord's Supper. He makes his way to the high altar in St. Peter's Basilica, the altar which sits directly over the tomb of St. Peter. For those of you following on TV and other visual media, you notice that the Baldacchino, the Baldacchin of Bernini has been that has been covered because it is under a renovation project ahead of the Jubilee for 2025. The deacon has made his way to the altar.
candles are set on the altar, and the deacon uncovers and opens the ciborium. All of the ministers of communion surround the altar that has been prepared with the pre-consecrated hosts so that they may be distributed to the congregation here in St. Peter's Basilica, which numbers around 4,500 today. And the Cardinal Cel Celebrant comes to the altar. Ore Ceptis Salutaribus Moniti et Divina Institutione Formati. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, The Our Father. Libera nos quesimus Domine, ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tue adiuti, et a peccata simus sempre liberi, ad ob omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et ad ventum salvatoris nostri ies Christi. Echan nus dei, ecce quitoli peccata mundi, beati qui acenam agni pocati sunt. Domine non sum dignus, utinus estetum meum, se tantum di greco e sanavitur anima mea. The Cardinal the altar is Lazarus Yu Hung Sik. He's the prefect of the congregation for the clergy. And we, though we cannot receive our Lord in Holy Communion at this time, we join those in St. Peter's Basilica meditating on this mystery of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection.
faithful in St. Peter's Basilica receive Holy Communion, we pause and join them spiritually. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. At this point the body of Christ has been reposed in the tabernacle which will remain closed until the Easter Vigil on Saturday night when we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. And we here prepare to for the final prayer. Almighty ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we have may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. And now the the Holy Father, the deacon invites us to bow down 
for the blessing. Super populum tuum quae sumus homine, qui mortem fili tu in spe sua resurrectione. May abundant blessings, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people, who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. And with that, the liturgy comes to a close. But in a way, it does not close because this is one single liturgy that runs from the evening of Holy Thursday through all the way to the Easter Vigil, the lighting of the Easter fire on Holy Saturday. This liturgy did not begin with the sign of the cross and neither does it end with the sign of the cross. But we continue our Lenten penance throughout the day and throughout tomorrow as we meditate on the death of our Lord. Holy Saturday is a day in silence. It is the a day in which Christ lay in the tomb Pope Francis is in his wheelchair brought in front of the altar where he, which he bows toward which he bows and is wheeled back to the sacristy of St. Peter's Basilica. And with that, we end this live broadcast of the celebration of the Lord's Passion, presided over by Pope Francis in St. Peter's Basilica. I invite you to join us again at 9.05 p.m. Rome time this evening, in just a couple of hours, when the Holy Father will preside over the Way of the Cross at the Colosseum. You can find information about the Via Crucis meditations which were written by Pope Francis himself by visiting the Vatican News web portal, our Facebook, Instagram, and X accounts. You will also find playback of all the Pope's liturgies, summaries of his homilies, as well as other coverage of Vatican and world news. On behalf of Vatican Media, I would like to thank our in-studio audio technician, Daniele Giorgi, and our audio coordinator, Massimiliano Menichetti, as well as all of our media partners and all of you who have joined us on EWTN-TV, Catholic Faith Network in America, Salt and Light TV, Shalom World TV, Atma Darshan TV, Shalom TV India and Sunday Shalom, Catholic TV, Luminous Radio in India, and UCTV Uganda Catholic Television, and to all of you joining us through the worldwide telecast. And I wish all of you a blessed and prayerful triduum. Laudetur Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ.
are inclined to sin. When sin crept deep into our lives, she came to crush Satan.